there was this lady named Dorothea Puente. The way that she grew up, it was just kind of um, her means of adapting and uh, coping in society was to make up who she was, make up herself. And she decided that she was going to become a little old lady, no threat to anybody, um, excellent caregiver. She was going to hobnob with the local politicians, even the governor, because of being such a beneficial person who would take in people from the streets and, and care for them in her boarding house. She was in good with the local social workers. But the thing was, Dorothea was also narcissistic and she was very money oriented. She just wasn't able to maintain the lifestyle that she wanted through just being the caregiver to these people so it was a lot easier for her if some of these people would just disappear and she could keep cashing their government checks chose people that she felt that no one would miss up to a point it seems like she was getting away with it but there was a guy named Bert Montoya who uh, I think he was schizophrenic and he was a nice guy very personable and his social workers really liked him a lot and they they had been talking to him and he had been telling them that he wasn't comfortable over at Dorothea's boarding house anymore and he wanted to um, move out and then all of a sudden he wasn't showing up for his meetings with the social workers anymore and they were very concerned they kept going over the, it was at 1426 F Street in Sacramento California is where Dorothea's boarding house was and every time that they went to try to meet up with Bert Dorothea had different stories as to where he was and it just wasn't adding up to them. Like she said that he went to Mexico and stuff like that. So they called in a well-being check. Law enforcement went over to the house. They had also received some anonymous tips telling them to look in Dorothea's garden. Some neighbors had been complaining for a while because of some foul smells that would come out of her garden and stuff like that. And Dorothea would say it was just the garbage or that the septic system would back up or something. And so the police went there and they were digging up the garden you know, with Dorothea's permission. She even loaned them a shovel because they there was three cops well, two cops and a parole officer because Dorothea was on parole for um, previously fleecing people. Anyway, they started digging and they found a limb and Dorothea acted all surprised and everything and was like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that got there. It, it wasn't me. And, you know, she's a little old lady and they're just like, oh, okay, you know, she's frail. She didn't do anything. And they said that they were going to come back the next day and dig some more she agreed and the next day when they showed up to dig more she told them that she was having terrible anxiety and that she wanted to go meet her nephew over at the cafe in a hotel that was nearby and one of the cops actually escorted her through the crowds because of course there's a bunch of crowd gathered the news crews and everything going what's going on in this yard and um uh, the cops <laughs> escorted her to this hotel and then went back to the property and so Dorothy is in the hotel and as soon as she sees that the cops out of sight she just went right over to the hotel courtesy phones and called herself a cab and got the heck out of there and she caught a bus down to Los Angeles and then the the cops were all red-faced because you know they started pulling up more bodies and going oh we need to talk to Dorothea and then they you know, she was gone. There was a APB for her. She was featured on the news and stuff. There were seven bodies pulled up out of her garden. Dorothea was laying low in a hotel in Los Angeles, but she got lonely and decided to go out to a bar to pick up on a guy. She found a guy that fit the description of most of her mail marks. So she was coming on strong with him, suggesting that she should go home with him, that she could make him Thanksgiving dinner, that they should probably move in together. But he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, so then he agreed to meet her the next day to take her shopping. But the whole while he's going, she seems familiar. What, what do I know her from? And then when he got home, it hit him. So he called the news station and said, hey, you know, you were running a story about this landlady that has seven bodies in her garden. You know, could you show me 
the pictures, I think that I was just hanging out with her. And so the news crew met up with him, showed him the pictures. He was able to positively identify Dorothea. So then they all called the police and the news crew was on hand as the police and the guy went over to the hotel and he pointed out what room Dorothea said was hers. And um, they arrested her without incident at the hotel. Uh, the news crew actually paid and chartered the flight to take her from Los Angeles to Sacramento. The police were on the plane as well. And the news crew got an interview with Dorothea. And um, just when you look at the footage of the interview, you can see how she kind of wavered back and forth between reality and her fantasy. Um, she talked about meeting the King of Jordan and uh, being friends with uh, the Raggins and all kinds of stuff. And some stuff was true, but you know, she usually did that sort of thing where she would just embellish the truth rather than making the whole thing up, which I guess is probably what made her so believable to people. Anyway, she eventually was convicted of three of the murders that she was accused of. And to her dying day, she died in prison of old age. She never admitted to killing anybody, never even admitted disposing of the remains herself. All she admitted to was stealing their identities and cashing their checks. You know, it was just a crazy story.